Okay, so my presentation is, is on what it takes to be a champion. Um, here's a quote by Muhammad Ali, you know, the guy who showed you how great he was. He, uh, one of his good quotes was, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, the ultimate boxer, the ultimate champion. This is another great quote of his. He said, champions aren't made in gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside them, a desire, a dream, a vision. They have to have the skill and the will, but the will must be stronger than the skill. Now, I do agree with part of this, but at the same time, you know, an athlete is a lob of clay. Put that out there. Uh, you can have all the desire, you can have that vision put in your mind, but you're not going to be anything without the gym, right? You're not going to be anything without the new technology, you're not going to be anything without the weights, you're not going to be anything if you don't go for a two mile run, okay? So what I'm going to talk to you about is something like strength and conditioning. Um, that's getting in the gym every day, that's doing weightlifting, strengthening your muscles, um, getting your conditioning up, your lung strength, all of that to go ahead and be the best athlete that you can be. Um, a big a huge injury for athletes, especially female athletes, is the ACL tear. Now that's um, on the side of your knee, it goes through straight through the middle, and basically that is just a huge part of your knee. You can't run, you can't put weight on it if that is torn. Um, and 70% of all ACL tears are non-contact, which means obviously they're not getting hit. It's something that if you go up for a jump or if you go ahead and, and you're just making a sharp cut, that it just tears. And obviously that's very painful. You can imagine just, say your teammate falls on the ground, screaming, tears, everything. It's a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale. And, uh, and they heard a pop, you know, it's their ACL, it's gone. You can prevent that by going in strength and conditioning. You can do RDLs, which is a hamstring um, strengthener, or squats. You need to protect your muscles. You need to protect the ligaments in your knees by making your muscles stronger, and that's what you can do in the gym. Um, you are 66% less likely to tear when doing these drills, when getting in the gym and doing all these preventative activities. Um, in high school athletes, 51.6% of male athletes are in a strength and conditioning program. For females, it's 45.2%. In college, it's 100%, and this is why we see less injuries as we go through the college years. Now obviously we're getting older and we're not so easy to come back from an injury. But at the same time, with these preventative activities, there are less injuries because of them. Another thing that helps us become uh, great champions would be our GPS systems. This is something that we're doing here at Notre Dame. We have uh, these catapult GPS systems that we strap. It's like a, an extra sports bra that both men and women wear here at Notre Dame. Um, and it's a, a GPS system about this big, and it, it lies right here between your two shoulder blades. Um, what that does it, is it tracks your miles, it tracks how fast you go, um, how, how high you jump, it tracks your player load, which basically means that it's tracking how hard you get hit, how hard you fall, all that good stuff. Um, so basically, um, a big thing that we learned on the women's soccer team is that college midfielders in soccer, at least for our team, we run an average of six miles per game. So that is a lot of mileage, but that changes for per player, so that's why it's easy to tell with the GPS systems um, how far you can run. And at the same time, this is a great way to push your team, to push yourself, because, hey, we all do it, right? The coach turns his back, okay, I can take a break. Okay, I mean, I, I guess I won't make that sprint. But at the same time, you can walk over to that computer and he can look at, hey, why didn't Morgan just slow down? I, I think I saw the ball go over the defender's, defender's head, but her numbers aren't up. She's not running as fast as she possibly could. So with the GPS systems, you have your maximum speed limits, your maximum distance limits, and your minimum. And so we know how hard you're going. We know how hard you can push yourself. So it's just another reason why uh, we can get better. 
The next big thing that goes along with the GPS system is that we wear a heart rate monitor. And so basically, uh, it's just about, it's a little nugget basically, and it's strapped across your chest. And uh, it, re it measures your resting heart rate monitor and your maximum heart rate um, levels when you're, you're running as hard as you can go. Um, it also measures your, your heart rate when you're a little nervous, so I bet I could use that right now. <laughs> but um, it's really shocking that only 10 to 30 percent of college programs use these systems because it's a great way to show how hard someone's working or, for example, if they need to break well during a game. I remember coming out during a game uh, this season and uh, you know, I thought everything was great, I was doing really well, but maybe you know, I didn't get so much sleep last night. And so I get pulled off and I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like, um, it's okay, I'll let someone else go in. I'm, I'm happy with supporting my team on the bench. The next day though, I go to coach and I say, hey, did I do something wrong? Is there something that I can, I can perfect? And he goes, hey, you should talk to your athletic trainer. And so she controls everything that goes on with these computer systems. And she said, hey, your heart rate was too high. It was past your maximum limit. If we kept playing you, you would have been dead the next day. Not dead, but you would have been really exhausted. <laughs> and so not ready for, for tournament play. And so I was like, okay, all right, I get it. I guess I'll come off. I'll, I guess I'll get more sleep for the next game. Um, the downside to this is that it does cost a lot of money, but at the same time, if you're looking to have a top college program, if you're look, looking to be a champion, then this kind of technology is what you need. Um, and the next one is the second part of that um, quote. It's called grit. You know, it might not be in all the English dictionaries, it may, might not be this word that everyone knows, but what it is, is it's heart. It is that desire, it's that passion to be better. You have all these resources, which is making you a better player, but at the same time, if you don't have that vision, if you don't have that, that striving passion to be a better player, you will not get to that next level. So this is what it takes to be a champion. And that's my citation. Great. <laughs>